This week 13 college football picks edition of the sports gambling podcast is presented by mybookie.ag. Right now to honor football, my bookie is offering up to $1,000 in free bets using the promo code SGP. That's right. $1,000 in bonus bets on your first deposit when you use the promo code SGP. Play, win, and get paid at mybookie.ag. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay-per-head providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sportsbook. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Welcome, everyone, to the sports gambling podcast i'm sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks ryan real money kramer what's happening kramer let a little uh slobber out there slow i mean i'm sure people are watching on youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast you missed the beat that's all all right <laughs> joining us as always colby dan aka the dantabase <laughs> What's up, guys? What's happening, man? Great. great to be here. Great to be here, indeed. A fresh off our uh, Washington State uh, trip, went up to uh, Pullman, Washington. Got to hang out with the great Coach Leach, and uh, yeah, man, it was an awesome experience. It was great, Coach Leach, Coach Spurrier. I met. Yeah, you did. You went up out of uh, just went up and introduced yourself to Coach Spurrier. Spur- Coach Spurrier, we got to hang out on Friday. I uh, got to see him do the walkthrough. Give it, give it. A, that a dude is talk. old as shit. Yeah, he is old, but I guarantee you, he still thinks coleslaw sandwiches are for pussies. Will, y- <laughs> <laughs> will you be able to get around that well? How old is he? Seventy-one. Uh, um, uh, that sounds. Accurate. Are you gonna hang out? No hat on his head, wearing a thin long sleeve. Of course. At can't that age, weakness. can't show weakness. I, I, I don't know. I would have been fine with a sweatshirt, a, hat, a hoodie, <laughs> maybe a hat. The old ball coach, indeed. Yeah, uh, Colby, of course, referring to the fact that uh, Ryan embarrassed us in the press box by eating a coleslaw sandwich. Yeah. Sitting next to former NFL players, this guy's eating a coleslaw that sandwich. That is a disgusting <laughs> act. <laughs> how, Joe, do you, how do you? Joe Buck is loud. How do you make a sandwich that is all coleslaw, Ryan? Yeah. Uh, look, listen, I had a great, great time in Pullman, but I, I don't <laughs> know if Pullman is a vegan-friendly town, if you know what I mean. They had pasta salad. I, I did. I, I chowed down on no, uh, no less than two plates of pasta salad. <laughs> Lots of good veggies in there. Some broccoli, some raw broccoli. That's always good for you. But yeah, I, and then the rest of the spread was just nothing but inflammation. So I had to, I had to resort to my MacGyver-like food tactics. At, um, just uh, saw the coleslaw. I was like, well, I like coleslaw on top of the pulled pork when it's on the roll. Maybe I'll like it by itself. <laughs> on, on Friday... We saw the we went to the practice, the walkthrough, and we saw yep. the offensive line with their shirts off. Yep. And I know, uh, you know, you were probably a bit aroused about that. But anyway, no, um, I was not aroused at all, Kobe. <laughs> these are, these 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 men might not be of age. They I have to wait a little bit before. Um, you think they ever had a coleslaw sandwich in their day? You know, I I do know there are some players. That I think believe the center for your UCF uh, Knights is a, a vegan. Uh, I know that that's a thing. In I'm, Florida, starting to, I'm starting to learn Impossible. more about starting right. to learn more about the community. <laughs> that was pretty funny. It was a nice uh, <laughs> when we went out to dinner. Colby and I, of course, got the ribeye, and then I shot a video over on a sports gambling podcast or Instagram sports gambling podcast of like shot of my steak, shot of Colby's steak, and then heading over to the pile of pesto that was. Uh, oh, Ryan, that was pretty good. That was Ryan pretty good. Ryan Soy Boy uh, Kramer over there. <laughs> And that was uh, that was a nickname courtesy from um, Scott Bowser <laughs> came in with the soy boy as the nickname. And that's got a great ring to it. So congrats, soy boy. But yeah, awesome, awesome game day experience up at Pullman. Uh, went and hung out at the Coog, which is their uh, <laughs> which is like their local uh, Washington State bar as we pregamed uh, beforehand. Had a can, couple I, can I share something with everyone? Sure. Uh, when we were in the Coog and um, it's a small little bar, you know, like uh, basically your stereotypical college bar writing all over the place. M- Gardner Minshew definitely laid some <laughs> seed on the walls of the, that place for sure. Oh, no! And I had this moment where I was like, God damn, I'm old, which uh, it happens more frequently now. But when I saw a couple 
younger people turn the corner holding a beer pitcher filled with blue liquid with an upside down Red Bull can. <laughs> It's like holy shit, that looks horrible. Yes, yeah. like that yes. looks like a heart attack. Yeah, they call them uh, adios. trash cans. Well, yeah. adios motherfuckers is is the drink name that you may have heard them at. Uh, they used to have them back at Saddle they, Ranch. They didn't have Red Bull in those things. Though? No, that was no. a that was an adios, <laughs> a Long Island juiced up past being an adios. Motherfucker. It's like if you mixed Windex with uh, Red Bull. I honestly though, if you. <laughs> If you're just willing to put a, a a a can of Red Bull in your drink, yeah, do you know where that can's been? They're not washing the outside of that can. Uh, we are in a college town. Alcohol, That's probably the alcohol least gross. disinfects. That does not. N- n- uh, <laughs> listen. Colby, it don't work like that, Colby. Colby, as a bartender, that's what Colby tells everyone. I like, oh, don't worry. I disinfect that, the that's glass. His, that's his pre makeout <laughs> pickup. Don't worry. The alcohol disinfects. Don't worry. I'm clean. I had some alcohol earlier. Hey, don't worry. You know, you, you got a cut. Just I don't some, have a condom. Some don't worry. Vodka on that, man. Don't worry. The, the Colby, <laughs> was, uh, Colby was socializing with a lot of uh, folks at the Coog bar. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, my, I met some uh, some some damn fine Washingtonians. <laughs> it it was fun, right? Like it's always fun <laughs> leaving L A. LA where things are much much cheaper. We had a situation where the, the, this What's bar cheap? here. No, no, up oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah. We had the situation where the you know again typical college bar like people don't realize they don't have to tolerate bullshit like waiting in a twenty minute line for a drink. <laughs> so the first time Colby waits in the twenty minute line for the drink. And he's like, this is bullshit. The next time we're sitting ne- right next to the bar, we just lean over and we're like, hey, can you get us some drinks? And she's like, oh, I can't help you like that. You have to wait in line. And then she goes, but I could do it for some special tips. And it's like, <laughs> I thought she was referring so, to you. So to I'm, going like, down on you. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> give me five <laughs> shots of Fireball. I think we got a, a, a round of whiskeys with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, she's like, mm, like, and I just I think I just threw 60 bucks at her. And she's like, that'll do. And it's like in L.A., like 60 bucks maybe yeah. wouldn't have covered those drinks. Yeah, yeah. no. I, in, no, in I don't Pullman, think it would have. In Pullman, that yeah. was a $30 tip. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, good time at the Coog. Good time at the Coog. There was some awesome uh, graffiti that I posted. Uh, my favorite was, I want Minshew to be my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was you know, some of the Cougs uh, showing some Coog love. And then there was, of course, a uh, 1-800-CALL-A-COOG uh, graffiti that um, – I saw I saw uh, a woman come up and go and take a photo of, and then she's like, she said to Colby, they got my phone number on the wall. <laughs> she did say that to me. She yeah. did say that to me. And that's that's not the first off. time she's she started off a night <laughs> with that line. Oh, that's her go-to move. But yeah, it was awesome. Uh, I like, mean, you, she's basically walked up and you was like, I love to fuck. Yeah, I get that a lot. Like, you know what I mean? From time to time, when I dabble in these small towns. In L.A., it doesn't happen that often. Uh, it was certainly an interesting weekend. <laughs> certainly an interesting weekend. But Stayed yeah, at get- a, a beautiful ranch house that, thing dude, with llamas. Any place with llamas, I'm, I'm all about, you know? It was basically a bed and breakfast out in uh, Idaho because we couldn't find a, a place to stay in Pullman. So, 15- For those who don't know, it's like on the border. Yeah, it's yeah. right yeah. on the edge yeah. there. And, uh, yeah posted some videos of us hanging out with some llamas of course posted some sweet photos from uh you know coach leach's office and uh, and just the, the facilities the facility in general the my favorite is the coach leach there's a uh, picasso of mm. uh, remake of coach leach that's uh, pretty awesome he de- you can definitely you definitely get the vibe that the man does not take himself too seriously. Uh, he's got a good sense yeah. of humor. He's got a talking pirate. They have a giant Bigfoot uh, statue that the, they move from office to office. There's this like somewhat like serious but hilarious shot of him just jogging onto the field. <laughs> That's like it's like yeah he he thinks he thinks all of this is well. And then funny. the all timer is uh, if you ever seen the episode of Kramer oh. or sorry of Seinfeld where Kramer gets a uh, painting <laughs> made of himself where he's like not wearing a shirt on and no, just no that's some... Costanza not Kramer. oh sorry Costanza yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, he's in some like tidy whitey boxers yeah and like you know seductively turning the camera and <laughs> there's a Coach Leach version uh, but all this I'm gonna post a video on Twitter at Gambling Podcast kind of with some with some highlights uh, I was from the mostly trip. surprised uh, to how much. Uh, they were willing to to give us access to places it was fantastic like man. i definitely get like getting a tour of the facilities which are super awesome by the way yeah, yeah. 
uh, like it, everything is just windows onto the field. So like weight room, windows onto the field. Leach's yeah. office, windows onto the field. And uh, I, I was a little surprised they were just like, hey, go walk around Coach Leach's office, check yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, offensive, defensive. And it's like I get it. It's a mar- It's like it's a it's a marketing room, right? It's got all this cool memorabilia and shit. Yeah. But all at the same time, it's like. Yeah, ah, you just letting these random strangers hey. into the coach's office. And but that, that was the other thing I didn't realize. And Kramer was alluding to it when he's saying like windows onto the field. Basically, their entire football complex is right behind the one end zone and all the windows overlook the field. So kind of wherever you are in the complex, you got to get super look at dope. It. So, so it was great when we could watch, uh, you know, what was our lead pipe lock? Do we give out? Wazoo minus 10 or 10 and a half, and what happened? Come we on. did. Gave out uh, Wazoo minus 10, and then, uh, yeah, we were actually on the field to see the, the uh, f- you know, seventh touchdown, 49 points. Max uh, the Borgie. quarterback, yeah. Gordon, uh, just uh, set the record. We yeah. got to see it in person, set the record for most – passing touchdowns uh, in Washington state history. So we also got to experience the Borgie, Borgie, Borgie. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. And it's just like, Oh, you guys, we had Drew Bledsoe there. We had Jason yeah, Hansen. strange amount. Of, I Corey don't know. Hunter. I don't know. A lot if, of big uh, alumni. Yeah. I don't know if uh, the, the kicker is on the same plateau as Drew Bledsoe. Hey, J- Jason Hansen was in the NFL longer. I think it's good time. It was, it was time. funny too. Cause uh, some of the game we were down kind of hanging out on the field. And then a lot of it were up in the, in the box in the press conference. And it was uh, <laughs> like the first, a big play down the field. We all like che- get up and cheer. And they're like, yeah. guys, guys, you can't cheer. You can't <laughs> cheer. And then it was, we kept catching ourselves because we got clearly, money. We got money. Clearly we're, we're homers. <laughs> we all have money on Wazoo minus 10. So and then we're like, <laughs> I kept trying to provide analysis that was <laughs> impartial, but clearly me cheering for Wazoo. Like, wow, I don't know what that uh, Stanford guy saw in that throw. <laughs> Dude, and, and, and I'm, I think we got to go back every year and make this our thing. A yearly trip to Pullman. Yeah, I'm down to reinvite ourselves to Pullman. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to say we delete our gals off the spreadsheet, and our new mm. gals are the Washington. Oh, State they're our Cougars. main squeeze. Yeah, yeah. You, it's almost like you're stealing some material for later in the show, Cole, because oh, I have a single s- similar angle. Okay, okay. I'm, you know, intri- I'm intrigued, which wh- doesn't really happen much with you. I would go a little further to say, when you're in college, you don't want a long-term girlfriend. <laughs> you want to make sure you're staying fresh. You want to make sure you understand what that means. So I think it's time. <laughs> Sean? Yeah. You're up. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's on one tonight. I, I didn't uh, know. I, oh, full disclosure. I had some cocktails <laughs> before the podcast. He's been on a run. And we- it's late as shit. <laughs> yeah. And Look. oh, by the way, I think, what, 24 hours? When did we get home? It's like the, everything's washing together. Hey, we got him back on the sauce after Pullman. Yeah. After a few of those uh, coleslaw sandwiches, he <laughs> changed his life around. <laughs> I mean, honestly, right. the worst part of the trip was when, when you guys went to that burger place and I uh. watched them make those burgers by <laughs> taking an ice cream scooper and scooping ground beef onto, was a, a, delicious burger, onto a griddle it? and just using uh. the spatula to like flatten it, grill one side, flatten the other, like cooked properly. Oh my God. And what, what delicious! Do I, burger. I, I could taste freedom with every bite. Then I watched shot. them pulling like a fucking chickpea burger out of the freezer <laughs> and throwing it on the grill for me. I heard the guy behind the counter was like, "One pussy burger, <laughs> one pussy burger for soy boy, soy boy, <laughs> one burger he for even a queer." Into the microphone, he goes, "Soy boy, one burger for soy boy." <laughs> uh, yes, I would like a uh, plant-based diet over here. You know. Hashtag soy boy. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm all in. A soy boy, great nickname. All right, let's uh, we'll, we'll uh, briefly touch on week twelve. As I, hmm. I'm on a seven zero oh, and one run on locks and bonus locks the last four weeks. A couple other things to highlight. Colby hit his lock, his three team tees, and his bonus lock. Should have hit the dog too. Kramer, of course, <laughs> the overall leader at seventy three, sixty nine, and four maintaining his dominance of the top 25 at 23. Uh, and 15. I went one and four last week. Although yeah. I'm nipping at your heels. I'm 21 and 17 and I'm coming off a nine and three week, uh, putting you guys in the rear view there. Uh, what else, to, what else to highlight <laughs> back to back c- cumulative winning weeks on the six pack? Yeah. No one fi- again, Colby, Colby three and three, Sean and myself, we have, <laughs> You guys also sprinkled fairy dust on me. I was originally taking 
uh, Iowa and Notre Dame, and you guys peer pressured me. It was Veterans Day. Listen, bro. Peer pressured me into taking Navy. Keep your fucking All negative right? energy to yourself. Navy was certainly a uh, bad pick, <laughs> and Baylor. God damn it, Baylor. <laughs> that you were killing so- me. I mean, I, 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 Baylor uh, plus 10 was my lock, so I wasn't that angry. But, Baylor, you really should have won that outright and made me look like a genius when you're undefeated yeah. and you're going to squeeze your way in a college football playoff. Instead, I'm going to have to hang my hat on Oregon, my <laughs> other crazy pick that everyone said I was a maniac well, for Baylor could still there. beat Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship. Yeah, maybe. there's still an outside shot. Yeah. Colby, did you not middle that game? Oh, it was a beautiful, beautiful. What are you complaining about? I had, you a, literally, I had a great. Well, I had it as my dog. You listened to me at halftime and you said, wow, this Oklahoma number spread. is way <laughs> too easy. Let's hop on that. I put a whole shitload of money because I had a horrible day. Horrible weekend. No, no, no. Place. It was a beautiful weekend. My 49er Charger game or uh, 49er Cardinal oh, game. Oh, my God. Can we, so <laughs> Colby has a bet where he, I think he teased it to minus four. Yeah. It's a four point game and oh, time to do the lateral play. And out of nowhere, the offensive lineman just hurls it towards for, the goal for, line. For the, uh, they, they, for the, the Cardinal or the <laughs> Niners score. They go up by 10. They're just like, cool, game's over. We're not going to yeah, review it. They don't even review it. College basketball is now checking buzzer beaters to make sure the spread doesn't get fucked with. The NFL better get in the, get in the line. <laughs> no, no, no. The that N- was a perfect uh, and no then, call. And then what happens when we get to the airport? Colby gets upgraded. Yeah, the comfort you know, plus zone. I was on a gravy train with biscuit wheels, man, and then ah. it carried over today. You know, hit my uh, hit my parlay today. God damn, dude! Congratulations. How's it going, man? Life is awesome. I Life be- is awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna do my thing, right? Or uh, Colby, and that's talk about our presenting sponsor of the podcast, my bookie dot a g. Presenting sponsor of the podcast, great place. To bet your college basketball, your college football, as we're going to be talking about on this podcast. Of course, Thanksgiving to NFL action right around the corner. Existing and uh, new MyBookie customers, a free bet on the Bears-Lions game. That's right, up to $250 bet. If you hit it, congrats. Hey, you're you're already uh, winning money there. If you lose it, MyBookie's going to reimburse you. That's right. No brainer. Literally, you cannot lose. No risk. All gravy. MyBookie.ag. Play when to get paid. And uh, while you're there, use that promo code SGP for a sweet, sweet deposit bonus up to $1,000. MyBookie.ag. Let's crack one open for the Colby Six Pack. Toledo heads up to Buffalo. 430 kick. On uh, action, we got we got some Wednesday action. Oh, okay. All right, I'm trying to figure out these dates because clearly uh, a yeah, lot of these are wrong. Uh, yeah, I'll fix them. No, since. I had it incorrectly. No, someone must have went through. No, Colby. After a few drinks. No, Colby. I did you have d- this one incorrectly. I know I'm this right. On one this one was right. It's the all the other ones. That okay. are wrong. <laughs> all right, we got that sorted out. The behind the scenes stuff that the fans crave. <laughs> Toledo. Hey, the fans are telling me I should go to different networks. You know. It's happening. Oh, hit, I hit a parlay and this right, boom. You know? We got we got to have a talk. That's that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, one guy tweeted at you in all caps. Have you ever thought of picking that wager talk? <laughs> yeah, go Colby's for it. Colby's like thinks he's a rock star. Hey, oh, one I'm feeling guy good. tweeted I, at me. Feeling good, you know what I mean? Here, here's Someone my, else followed that up with, yeah, he knows more. Here's my like, take on that. What's that? Don't let the door uh, hit you on the way out. <laughs> yeah, also, of course we know more, and of course our stuff is more entertaining. That's how we built the whole fucking goddamn network. Yeah, uh, we're, let's pull back the curtain on the industry real quick. Wager talk. <laughs> Everyone all these, sucks. You know what they're doing? <laughs> they're selling pick packages, right? Yeah. They're hiring hot chicks to sit down with a guy named Vegas Runner and Big Dave and throw you reasons why well, you should pass a game. Well, if they would just followed my college basketball spreadsheet, they would see that I'm dominating. Don't tell them about it. They'll just start <laughs> plagiarizing. <laughs> You don't want them to plagiarize from the database. We only want our clients to see that. <laughs> Speaking of which, Sean, are we extending that special through the end of football season? If you want to get on our football, basketball, and everything else we pick package, we're going to extend that free trial through the end of this wow, year. Wow, Ryan, is that a mega whale play? It's That's a, a baby me- fucking wheel, well, man. Not only do you get Colby's, NC Nick, and and Patty C's football picks, you get their college bat. Basketball, you get the college every basketball division picks. one game. You get Sean and myself's NFL picks, which, by the way, we've been making those since 2011. Nice. Come at me. Yes. Wager talk. 
Now, I wonder, do those other companies eat coleslaw sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're definitely into inflammation no, they- <laughs> entering their body. I'm sorry if I like to be inflammation free. I, Colby, I haven't heard my ankle pop in three weeks. All right? Go for it. Oh, fuck yourself. They don't eat coleslaw. They eat shit. All right. Yeah. Toledo, <laughs> Buffalo. Buffalo, seven and a half point favorite. Minus 230 or minus 320 in the money line. Toledo, a plus 260 dog. Total sitting at 54. Colby, crack open the six pack with a winning selection or more likely uh, the side you'll be on. What's going on? Oh. 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 Well, there was Maxion tonight, and I took the money line oh. in Eastern Michigan yeah. and, and wrecked shit on my parlay oh, last God. week, if you remember. We all took Eastern Michigan against Akron or Bowling Green, one of those teams, and we dominated. The zips, horrific. So Max has treated us treated us pretty good. So uh, I'm on the I'm on the Rockets here. Look, Buffalo's good. They're 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 having a little bit of a setback here after winning ten games, but they lost their quarterback and top two wideouts. This game's in Buffalo, but Toledo's a cold ass place too. So I feel like the the weather's mm. a neutral thing there, and uh, Toledo's the better football team this year. So give me, give me the seven and a half in Toledo. Sprinkle some on the money line. Hey Sean, yeah. What happens to public dogs? They got fleas. They got fleas. Give me the Buffalo Bulls getting it done <laughs> against Toledo. Yeah, I'm also on Buffalo. This is pretty easy. Are Buffalo. you kidding me? You're really gonna fade a team going to Buffalo in November? Bulls Mafia. Just because Toledo is cold too. Buffalo. Five and two ATS in their last seven games this season, but also six and one ATS in their last seven games at home. A great home field advantage, and uh, yeah, I, what's not to like about the Buffalo Bulls? It's it's going to be a good spot for them. I'm not uh, Toledo. Thirty eight uh, degrees. Yeah, come on, perfect, perfect Toledo weather. What no. is the temperature? I actually looked this up and the weather in Toledo is 37 right now. So <laughs> it's kind of a moot point, but again, you can't go against the no, Buffalo no, no. Bulls. But that's nighttime. That's middle of night. This is for kick 38 degrees at kickoff. Yeah. They're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Give me the Buffalo Bulls all day. Kansas <laughs> heads to Iowa state in Ames, Iowa, Ooh. 9 a.m. Saturday kick Iowa state minus 24 and a half against Kansas who's had some uh, moments they're not the joke they once were Colby what are you doing three wins well they got the Mad Hatter and Les Miles and he's a legend they still have three they have three because I got that under wind for the win total so <laughs> well I think they're going to still be at three after this week but I'm taking the 24 and a half points this number is a little too too high Iowa State will get the win but uh Kansas gets the cover uh, this is a fucked up week for college football. I'm going real chalky. Give me Iowa State. Yeah, yeah Les Miles isn't going to prepare a team for a tough road trip. I know they've been playing well. I know I know they're a, they're a popular Texas team. Texas needed a last second field goal to beat them in I Austin. Kn- Texas is dysfunctional. Iowa State. Iowa State the- needed a last second field goal to beat Texas. <laughs> All right, the transitive property doesn't work in college football, Sean or Colby, but I'm going to continue to. Although this Kansas team is better. And it appears Les Miles is doing something right. He won't have them prepared for this road trip. Iowa State rolls. Kansas mm. won at Boston College. Virginia Tech loses at Boston mm. College. That was different. What do you got to say about that? That was the old Virginia Tech. Yeah. Colby. This is a crazy thing. I, I feel like this Jayhawks team was way worse last year. They're actually pretty good this year. They would probably be in a bowl if they're in the ACC. And, and I think they're much oh. better this year. They Last year they lost 27 to 3. Uh, so they would have covered that 24 and a half point spread. I think they covered again this year. I, I think Kansas has something to play for a little bit, and that's pride. Uh, Iowa State, yes, certainly they're the much better team, and that's why they're favored uh, when did by Kansas- by this many points. But Iowa State coming off a big win against Texas, maybe looking ahead to a bigger game at Kansas State the following week. Nice little sandwich spot, Ryan. You might oh. a meaty coleslaw spot, if you will. Uh, I so I think I think Kansas covers this. Uh, Kansas just became bowl ineligible, so maybe the kids are down from that. Nah, I think Ooh. they're I think they're it's riding true. momentum. <clears throat> Colby knows horrible. about this. I do know about this. Now uh, take the Jayhawks. Speaking of dream crushers, Minnesota had their dreams crushed of an undefeated Fucking season losers. last week. Uh, they lost. But now they're heading into Evanston, Illinois to face off against Northwestern. 
Northwesterns, you might remember as my bonus lock against <laughs> UMass, somehow pushed at 39. But when I put the bet in, it was it was off the key number of 39 at 41 and a half, and I still thought there was value. The, Northwestern was down three nothing at at, at the end, end of the first, the first quarter, and I, I tweeted out like, "Well, that was fun while it lasted. That's over." And then they somehow pushed a 39 point spread. Not expecting a, a similar outcome here, a 39 point win, but they are at home 14 point dog uh, against the golden Gophers. Um, Colby, which way, what are we doing here? This line jumped up from when I wrote it, but uh, I'm going to go with the Gophers cause Northwestern's dog shit. You know what I mean? Like just cause you destroy UMass doesn't mean you're a good football team. Uh, I will say this though. If I could call an audible, I would take this off the six pack right now. Wow! Because I I learned that Tanner Morgan is a uh, he got concussed last week, so there's a high. That's their starting quarterback for Minnesota. There is a chance he might not play this game. Mm. So why are you making this pick? <coughs> well, I just learned that when I was sitting in your driveway for thirty minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes <laughs> the talent's got to wait, Colby. Hey, well, you know what, soy boy, <laughs> things. <laughs> th- I'm going with the Gophers, regardless. Give me the Gophers. We got to pick it. It's on the sheet. Mm, okay, don't get it. Feels done. like the right thing to do. I think I saw Northwestern only outgained UMass by 110 yards. <laughs> How did he win a game by <laughs> 39 points? points and lost the turnover battle by two? What the fuck that did is that insane. happen? Insane. That's a miracle right there. That's probably never happened before. Uh, you can't take Northwestern. Yeah, yeah you can't. They're, you, like, so they're bad. coming off yeah. the bet. Like they're they're not. They have they scored 46 points all year. Oh, that's a good question. No, I, I don't. No, I know they haven't. I know they have. Not. I know. All right, yeah. let's see. They've scored. Oh no, they scored twenty-two against Purdue. What did they get against UNLV? Three against Indiana. Zero. Iowa. I think they got thirties against UNLV. Yeah, yeah, they they've scored thirty-five. They've scored over fifty. <laughs> oh, all combined. Oh, yeah. I got yeah, you. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, no, not in one game. Yeah. Yeah, they lost twenty to nothing to Iowa, fifty-two to three to Ohio State, <sighs> thirty-four to three to Indiana. Uh. And yeah, you got to fade Northwestern coming off this huge victory, career victory. The Gatorade was dumped. Minnesota, even though if they don't have their starting quarterback, I still like them to bounce yeah. back. Uh, I think, I mean, it's a really good team. It was very obvious, at least to me and most of the betting public who got this correct with uh, Iowa minus three last oh, week. Very obvious. He missed like a 19 yard field goal. <laughs> yeah, I was on the, listen, I got you on the right side of this one. Nah. With was, I, yeah. Iowa got up to that big lead and was yeah. dog shit the rest of the way. I like uh, I like the re- resiliency that Minnesota showed. Yeah, mm. gutty, and, gritty performance. And I just expect, I mean, the thirty five points they've scored in the road all year, so they outscored their road total. Boom! There you go, Northwestern. San Jose State heads to Las Vegas, Nevada, to square off against UNLV. UNLV, a six and a half point home dog. Colby, what are you doing here? I'm loving this uh, San Jose State team, and I'm I'm loving fading UNLV like I did last week with my bonus lock of Hawaii coming into <laughs> Vegas and getting it done. But San Jose State's just a better team. They're they're they got a, a fifth year senior quarterback in Love. He's good. Uh, they are still playing for a bowl game. They get this win, and all of a sudden they get a, a final game against Fresno in San Jose. Stranger things have happened. The Spartans are gonna push towards this bowl game, get a dub by more than six points in Vegas. You know, he's really bad. Mm. Or they can just go and have a good time in Vegas. <laughs> Which path do they take, Colby? These are techies in San Jose. All right? mm, okay. San Jose is a great time. I don't think a techie is going to San Jose State. No disrespect to the school, <laughs> but. They, they have the greatest engineering minds at San Jose State. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What are you doing, Kramer? Oh, I um, I told you I was get, I was chalky this week. UNLV is garbage. I see what Colby's doing. He's putting them on a tee for me. But check us out. UNLV one and zero against the SEC. Ooh. Well, San Jose SEC. State. I think in general it's not a great year for Power Five conference. San Jose State one and zero against the SEC. Wow. San Jose State Spartans, according to the odds, a shark supercomputer, thirty five point eight predicted score to nineteen point eight. For the UNLV Rebels, UNLV just uh, pretty fucking bad. Two and five ATS, their last seven. One and eight straight up in their last nine. And uh, you know, I don't know, man. They're just. 
I don't know. UNLV not doing it for me. Not very exciting. San Jose State, they're able to move the ball. I mean, you look at the uh, matchup as far as uh, passing yards, 330 passing yards on average compared to UNLV, 204. That's a huge difference. That's enough to cover a six and a half point spread on the road. Give me big Sparty. I don't know if you call him that. <laughs> I know that's Michigan State, but I'm having some fun, Colby. Duke. Squares off against Wake Forest. Wake Forest, a seven point favorite in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Duke, interesting team. Are they good? Are they not? Colby, what are you doing here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're not very good. And uh, if you remember last year, um, I locked up this game. It was in Durham. Mm, oh, I. And, and Wake Forest won 59 to 7 against uh, some guy named Daniel Jones. Duke's Duke's four and six. They're not they're not horrific. I mean, they're certainly uh, they got better. beat by a bad Syracuse team in Durham last week, and they got beat p- pretty bad. Wake Forest. So, yeah, they shouldn't lose the Syracuse at home. Wake Forest is coming off back to back road games. They're coming back to to uh, beautiful Winston Salem. That's always helpful. Mm. And uh, I just think they have a better team. They're going to get it done. Blow out here. I've definitely been on the wrong side of, of the Hokies this year a, a number of times. Uh, I'm with you, Colby. Uh, I, I, again, I said I was going to be chalky. I, I, I'm fairly confident I know the ACC. This could be a big game for Duke. Revenge spot uh, si- situation where they need this win and then a win next week. To, Against Miami? To be uh, bowl uh, eligible. But strangely, Cutcliffe seems to have lost this team because if you if you look back to the week before, because they've seen they've seen <laughs> they didn't play much better against. They saw Eli Manning oh, and Daniel Jones being oh, horrific on the go. same. <laughs> here, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you know? You're responsible Col- for Daniel Jones and Eli. Colby, Manning. can you duck? I don't want you. To, I don't want you to get blood on this nice shirt. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, shots fired. Give me Wake Forest. I'm going against the grain. I'm I'm riding my boy Cutcliffe. This guy's a QB whisperer. Uh, I don't know what he's uh, whispering uh, to these guys, but Duke actually not a bad uh, road team against the spread. Eight, two and one uh, against the spread in their last eleven games on the road. But more uh, more importantly, have had uh, kind of had Wake's number when it comes to fifty nine to seven last year. Yeah. Duke seven and one ATS in their last eight games. One playing on the road against Wake Forest. Oh, all right. That's deep. wow. Yeah, there's a guy named Dave Clawson, and he's changing shit. All right. Six and two ATS in their last eight games against Wake Forest. So I think there's a little bit of a. I think they get up for this game. Duke's gonna struggle to yes. keep keep pace. That's why they're getting seven points. That's all they need. Okay, Final good. game of the beautiful Colby six pack TCU. Against Oklahoma, Oklahoma coming, coming off a crazy come from behind win against uh, Baylor there. Oh man, how did Baylor fuck that game up? The Sooners lane eighteen in Norman, Oklahoma. Colby, what are you doing? Um, well, look, Oklahoma is the luckiest team in the nation right Aww. now. Two weeks ago, they pass interfered on a two point conversion where they would have lost to Iowa State that the refs just magically just. And you know didn't uh, call, which I'm okay with because I like when they don't call pass interference because offense sucks. But um, <clears throat> they should have lost last week too. And I now, like when Colby's like lifelong arguments conflict, and he has to <laughs> figure out a way to like what's the tiebreaker, <laughs> who who wins. But I Is like it? this. I like this TCU team. Yeah, I think they're getting much better as the season goes along. And you're giving me 18 points. It was at 18 and a half when I wrote this, but 18, I'll, t- I'll still take it. And uh, come on. I mean, look, Patterson, they just beat Texas Tech. They beat Texas. 18 points is too big of a number for a team that Oklahoma can't play defense. The Oklahoma offense is not as good as it's been the past two years. The, uh, entirely, the Oklahoma team is not as good as they were in the past two years. Uh, I mean, this Oklahoma, I, I would love TCU if this was like them being like a, a 10 or 11 point home dog. I don't know if I love this in the situation where now Oklahoma is coming home after that big win. They still need style points. I told you I was going to be chalky, Colby. Jeez. I'm coming back to the chalk wagon. They come home. They so, need the so style boys points. On the wagon. <laughs> Ship it. Give me Oklahoma minus the points. 
Wow, that is a big number to lay for this Oklahoma team. I, don't give a I think I think that took <laughs> uh, a lot out of that Oklahoma team. That that game against Baylor, I think that scared them. I think it's going to be tough to get up emotionally. I mean, that was a draining game, and now you got to play against the TCU team. That's certainly not amazing, but they're at least decent. They have Penn State, Utah, Oregon, who play each other. Penn State has Ohio State and Alabama keeping them between them and the five spot. How is Penn State how's Penn, Style points, how's Penn State rated ahead of Minnesota? Didn't they play head to head? That does seem odd. Huh. Does seem odd. I'm also noting that a four loss I have Ohio uh, Iowa State team is ahead of my Hokies. So I'm and Appalachian oh. State, hmm. The USC seven and four. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I, I just think it's gonna be tough for them to get up for this game to blow out TCU. I think TCU, on the other hand, will will have a competitive game against Oklahoma. The pro the thing with Oklahoma that you have to remember is for them to blow someone out, it's not that like that can be a couple extra minutes of them just banging out some ninety yard drives. So I I really do think they're going they're going after style points here because there's a lot I I, I guarantee really do think they're not nearly as good as a team if they've been the past two years. No, but no. also I don't think I don't Oklahoma's Oklahoma's defense I think Oklahoma's defense is gonna give up like twenty points. So I think it's going to be tough to cover that giant number. Seventy thirty. TCU is the popular side right now, so that would concern me. Like that. That's one of those where everyone's like, "Oh no, this is TCU. Oklahoma's not as good as we think they are." Look, they almost lost to Baylor and Iowa State. They come out and roll. Oh yeah. Before we uh, move on to the top twenty-five. Talk about our pals over at Ace Per Head. Ever thought of starting your own sports book? I know. I wish I was in the other side of the counter this week. Horrific day when it came to the NFL picks. Did pretty good in college, as you heard. But hey, why not start your own sports book? I know what you're thinking. I don't know. I don't know how to set lines. Ace Per Head will set them for you. I don't know how to set up a gambling website. Ace Per Head will help you uh, set that up as well. They'll set you up with a professional betting site, lines updated to the second, wagers graded immediately, 24-7 customer support, mobile wagering, in-game wagering. They got it all. I got to do. Head over to aceperhead.com slash SGP. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. Gets even better. If you sign up over at Ace right now, they're offering up to six weeks free. Six weeks! Those are amazing sports book management software. I gotta be honest. Let's say you're just kind of on the fence. Sign up. Give it a shot. Just mess around. They have a live demo that you can log into on their site. It's uh, it's pretty cool. At least, if you're not going to sign up, at least do me the favor. Check them out. Give them a shot. You won't be disappointed. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. Don't beat the bookie. Be the bookie. Kobe, moving on to the top 25 where Penn State heads to Columbus, Ohio, to square off against Ohio State. OSU, 18 and a half point favorites against Penn State. Big number, but Ohio State right now, number one team in the game, dominating left and right. I have a feeling you're going to go Penn State. Am I right or am I wrong here? Uh, no, you are right just because – I mean, I didn't lock this. Some of my, my like NC Nick and Patty C locked this. I, I'm just a little. I'm not all the way sold on Penn State. Like when I look back two years ago when they had Saquon Barkley and everything. Yeah, they should have beat Ohio State, but uh, the past two years really. But um, there's something about Ohio State can can this year they look like they're almost. Dominant. You want you want to know what, what that thing you're trying? It's like right at the tip of your tongue. Ohio State is faster, bigger, stronger. They are going to little brother the shit out of Penn State. Earlier in the week, NBA writer for the Sports Gambling Podcast dot com, Zach Bronner, was like, "Hey, is there is there an opener you guys love more than this Penn State number?" And my response was, "Yeah, it's a lot of points. Hard to see it getting to twenty one. The more that I look into this game, the more I think this this number is going to climb to twenty one. And if you like Ohio State, you need to take it now." Take it early in the week because this it's going to climb. I truly believe that Ohio State is going to get the fuck out of the way of this team. This team is dominating. And Does I think specifically in this matchup, you're going to see Penn State 
struggle to deal with this defensive line, and you're going to see Penn State struggle to deal with the speed in this Ohio State offense. Does it scare you at all, though, that Franklin? I hate when you say this, go well, Franklin. The past two years, yeah, Penn State, in, my, done in well. my opinion, were the were the better team both games. They They've they blew well. they blew ten point leads in the final like five minutes of the game, but for the whole game, Penn State was, in my opinion, the better team in these matchups. So that I think Franklin does a good job coaching against Ohio State. It's different. Um, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, I think Meyer not being there, the team's a little, you know, it's not the same team. This team is eight and two against the spread. Yeah, but this is also the easily the best defense they've played they've played all year. So I will we'll see how it goes. Yeah. But when you're a nine and one team that's five and five against the spread, and you're playing a ten and zero team that's eight and two against the spread, that tells me that even with inflated lines, Ohio State is still covering. Meanwhile, Penn State. I just think you can't. You 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 look in, in games like this. I think the throw the numbers out. What? Throw the numbers out a little bit. You know what I mean? Like maybe you hit. Maybe you're right on this. I was I was a little reluctant. That's why I didn't lock it up. And NC Nick and Patty C did. But I still think it's too many points. You got it. You got to go with the dog in this situation. Yeah, I'm going chalk here. I'm going Ohio State. Ooh. This Ohio State team is kind of they're just on another level. Penn State is a good team. Uh, for sure, but they're not they're not getting into the college football playoff and I, I don't think they're competing with this Ohio State team. Ohio State is at home. It's the early kick. Uh, they're going to have a bunch of momentum. Like if you it was Penn State plus 11, 11 and a half as a home dog night game where they really would have a, an emotional edge. I, I think they hang with them. But yeah, you're right, Colby. It is you're you're going back and forth between factoring in this year and how the team looked versus how they matched up historically. I think this Ohio State team is an outlier if you look at this rivalry. And uh, I unfortunately I think they're gonna kinda put it to Penn State and make a statement. I think they're the one that's gonna make the statement, not Oklahoma, when it comes to covering a big number this week. Ooh wee. Yeah, I, I mean again, they, they, you look at their last couple of games, they squeaked by Indiana. They lost to Minnesota. Indiana is seven and two though. Coming into that game, they're okay. not a bad team. Okay, they're not. Ohio, Ohio State is in a different class, right? Like you have, you have Ohio but that, that, State. That was a classic look ahead, man. Come on, this happens there. every. This happens all the time. The, the, oh, okay, so yeah. the week before they lost. Yeah, is that a look ahead too? No, but that was back to back away games. They looked like shit for a half against Michigan. I, I just think this team has holes. Ohio State. Of course rolls. they do have holes. Ohio State they, rolls. They still Sean. cover. Queuing of Sean. Ohio State rolls. Texas heads down to Waco, Texas. So they're already in Texas. Oh shit! Uh, well, that's far though, right? Austin to Waco. Austin to Waco. Waco, great place to hang out. <laughs> a lot of good things go down in Waco. Baylor minus five and a half against uh, Texas. Twelve thirty kick Pacific, of course. Colby, what are you doing here? We're going with the Longhorns, man. Mm. Uh, Baylor let me down last week. I had them on the money line. They should have. And uh, obviously Texas coming off a loss in Ames, which I predicted, by the way. And uh, and I just think it's a bad spot for Baylor to get Oklahoma and Texas back to back. Texas going to come in, give me the fi- and getting five and a half points. Come on, so even if Baylor wins, it'll be by three or four. You know. Are we worried a little? Uh, One hundred one miles, by the way. Is te- does does Texas fly or drive? Bus. Yeah, dri- Bus. One hundred miles. Yeah, they got a lot of money in that program. Uh. I hate this spot. I I hate that we have to pick this game because I feel like both teams are bet against. Like Texas is just a bet against team because once again they're just not li- like they need to get Mac Brown back or something. How how are they not gotten the most out of their talent yet? Yeah, Herman, de- it's been a decade. A little bit there. It's been a decade, yeah. and everyone will certainly be on Texas due to the the you know you're going to tell me what Tom Herman does as an underdog. I well, believe it's well, good, and they're coming off a loss. They're coming off a loss. They're going too bad. Baylor, on the other hand, I don't feel great about laying points with this Baylor team after what just happened, right? This is where Sean says, Dream Crusher. That be, I, I, I'm a little worried about this Texas team. I mean, both teams, I mean, I don't know. I just think you got to take points here. I, I mean, at what point is Texas just broken? If they lose this, they'll have five losses. <laughs> That's tough. They might not be bowl eligible. I'm going. Uh, I'm no, going Baylor eligible. here. Yeah, me uh, too. And, and you brought up a good point. It could be. It could be a dream crusher spot for sure. But I, I think Matt Rule, uh, when they 
he kind of rallied the team even after that crushing loss they did that like weird bear thing where they all got in the knees and like held up the bear hand he seems to really still have this team's ear and i i don't know if i could say the same thing about texas and their team it feels like a, another lost season for the longhorns and i think baylor responds and they respond in a, a decent way I, I think what they still need to win like they're still in the conference championship game then no, no, right? they're not it's not guaranteed yet if they win, oh, if they win this, yeah, they control their destiny. Yes, yeah. So and that, a and win puts them back out. in but, the tournament. But I, I do believe, I do believe Texas is still alive. The, the Texas is broken. I, they yeah. just it, they got to put them to the side. You know, Texas has been good against the spread, seven two ATS in their last nine games on the road versus teams with winning records. So they've shown up uh, as a dog against probably higher quality teams. And Baylor, I mean, why they didn't have an amazing resume as far as the college football playoff is they don't beat teams by crazy big margins. They just win games. And uh, so I think they kind of have a statement game here and win by a decent margin. So give me Baylor minus five. Texas nine. getting 55% of the tickets. Only 38% of the dollar, Sean. We mm. like that. Later like that. Place. The Aggies. Texas A&M head to Athens, Georgia to square off against the dogs, Georgia. They're not dogs. They're minus 13 point favorites. Colby, what are you doing here? I'm barking and barking and barking, man. This is the, 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 the week of the dog, I guess. I'm not, I, I'm not even convinced Texas a and is that good of a team when your best win is, uh, you know, uh, South Carolina or Mississippi state or something. Uh, just a true dog shit schedule for them, but it's a bad spot for Georgia. They got a huge win on the road in Auburn. They're coming back home, and A and M's kind of rested. They haven't really been challenged by, like I said, not since early when they lost their three games to uh, Auburn, uh, Bama, and Clemson. So g give me A and M to cover this number. I think Georgia might still get the win, but uh, thirteen is too big of a number. Thirteen and a half. Too Georgia big. is yeah. trash. They are the worst. They should they make the playoff. They, Come on. Dude, they have the worst loss in the top 25. And for some reason, the college football playoffs. They lost are, to a have horrible South Carolina team. Yeah. I, am I crazy? The Georgia just doesn't pass the eye test as one of these dominant top four college teams. I get it. They're nine and one, but there's so many teams. Even it, against Auburn last That's week. the worst loss. They have the worst loss out of anyone in the top 25. Yeah. You know, like I'm not a big uh, Alabama guy, but I, you can make a case for them. Oregon. Who I like, I would certainly put ahead of them. Even Utah, you could make a case for Oklahoma, Minnesota. I mean, there's it's crazy. These one loss teams, even Baylor. I and Baylor's fourteen somehow. No, Baylor should be ranked higher than Georgia. Right. I mean, they had that close loss to Oklahoma, who is yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Who's probably better than uh, Georgia? It's no, no, they're way yeah. So yeah, exactly, exactly, man. It makes the it makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. So are we all on the Aggies here? Kramer, Georgia's trash. Yeah. But before we do this, do we really all want to back Jimbo? <laughs> Seventy-five million dollar man, Jimbo. I'm going to do it just because, look, they haven't been up all year. They haven't played very good all year. They haven't looked good a and This is their chance to, sh to shine. I'm not backing Jimbo. Give me Georgia in a Lee Corso not-so-fast moment. Uh, also, also, Texas A&M is more trash. They wow. are. They're, they're, well, they're very unproven. Look at their – Look, their, talk about a schedule – Colby, you're making great <laughs> points. I'm not making good points. I'm just telling you, I'm not backing Jimbo <laughs> Fisher. No, I'm having a hard time doing it too. That was this is the game that I was kind of like, eh. Kind of like you were with the uh, the Baylor I'm with Texas you. all day, baby. Oregon Ducks, quack quack quack, head down to Tempe, Arizona to square off against the Sun Devils. Never uh, figured out from Coach Leach what a Sun Devil is. <laughs> ASU, a 14 and a half point home dog. Big number here in this Pac-12 matchup. What are you doing, Colby? I'm going to do it again, guys. I'm going to take – look, I've been fading Oregon all year, and I've been making me eat my words. Wazoo, yeah. sh Wazoo should have beat them if it wasn't for some terrible officiating. They're coming into a – this. I've watched college football since the early 90s, and this place has always had a, a – for top 10 teams, almost like Iowa, to come into the desert as a top 10 team and play Arizona State. Not Arizona. Arizona State. 
it is a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous you team to why? play. You know why? Because when they get there the night before, Arizona State deploys their horror team <laughs> on, on the opposing football yeah, team. Yeah. The Trojan and virus. And they drain all the starters, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So I'm riding with the Sun Devils, mm. and I say sprinkle some on that money line. Sprinkle some on that money line. They've been. They did it in '98 with Nebraska. Kramer, what are you doing? I'm not taking Herm Edwards. You play to win the game. I guess. Playoffs. So, give me Sean's Oregon Ducks. Quack quack quack. Give me the Ducks. Quack. They're right on that quack quack quack. Blood, breath, or urine? No thanks. I'm full. <laughs> uh, classic line from. Who's Mulder, the guy who does the play by play in that in, in Mighty Ducks? Oh. That's a great question. I'll look that up. But while I'm doing that, let's talk about the Oregon Ducks. I think there's there, – here's the thing. Uh, they're a team that's right on the edge. They're right on the bubble, right? And you yeah. saw that from this uh, Clemson team. Clemson felt a little disrespected, a little like, oh, really? You're not going to put us in the top four? Mm-hmm. Extra little, uh, little something, little something, something. And I think Oregon – they're going to know. I, I I think they're they're going to be able to move the ball at will against this Arizona State team. And Colby, you've talked about it. You've bet against Oregon and they keep finding ways to beat you against the spread, especially like this Oregon State team just has the ability to score quickly, ability to find big plays, both on the offensive and defensive side I, of the ball. I've like never just, been with the exception of maybe the USC game, though. I've never been in, like, sh- like, oh, my God, this is a really good team. No. And uh, and. I kind of predicted, you know, again, my couch football oh, player prediction is go. that they would make it, they would make it in, which it was kind of a long shot and they haven't been as good as I th- as I thought they've been. However, certain teams just kind of make plays, kind of have a little bit of juice, and I think they just have that right bit of swagger that you need to come in on the road and blow out a a much worse Arizona State team. And we're still talking about the Oregon game, huh? Yeah. Man, uh, Sean's really into Oregon this year. <laughs> Pittsburgh Heads to Blacksburg, Virginia, where Virginia Tech is a minus four point favorite. Kramer, I'll give you the honors of uh, kicking things off. Just wager done the game, Sean. Minus mm. four. This, uh, I, it pains me because I'm not a big Fuente fan, mm. but he's done something. Something happened around that Duke game that galvanized this unit that allowed them to in their only loss since that game, which shouldn't have been a loss. They went to Notre Dame with their third string backup slash third string quarterback almost took it to the Irish. They should have won that game. The refs. And I I, I didn't want to be that guy. And and now they're just steamrolling teams. Granted, Georgia tech is hot garbage. There's a bunch of hot garbage in the ACC Pittsburgh. They're dangerous at home. This is not a home game. They're a dangerous team. Whenever you play them. They're they, dangerous. They beat Clemson with Deshaun Watson in Clemson, South Carolina. If this was if this was in Pittsburgh, I'd be worried. Virginia Tech's getting zero respect with this number only being three. Colby, if you were it's gonna four. be like sorry, four. <laughs> if you're gonna tell me sure, Virginia Tech might not have the home field advantage they used to. Uh, and it might be a day game. But this you're telling me on a neutral field, Virginia Tech's only laying a point, maybe a half point here. Well, I'll tell you what. No. I'm taking the Panthers of oh Pittsburgh. My God. I'm also rocking. I think it's a terrible spot for Virginia Tech. The, the How week- many times do we talk about this? The <laughs> fuck my life tour is happening next week against UVA. <laughs> I think I think you're miscalculating the fuck my life tour. All right, because fifteen years in a row, I they think, have destroyed UVA. I think, it's I gonna think be this right year. now. You're playing better ball than UVA. You're looking towards that ACC mm. championship, and you're sleeping on this Pittsburgh team that's pretty Stop good. It. It's a classic look ahead line again. Great coleslaw sandwich spot between <laughs> dominating Georgia Tech and then looking ahead yeah. towards the rivalry game that <laughs> finally matters against UVA. Pittsburgh is that shredded cabbage in between and uh the I think coleslaw I sandwich think that, spot of the I league. think that could be trouble. They're they got some, you know, cabbage in there, some mayonnaise, little you sliced just, carrots. <laughs> honestly, soy. you guys are just being dicks right now. Hashtag soy boy. I think what's going to happen is. You guys are really just being dicks right now. Well, I think what's going to happen is Virginia Tech's going to get down. They'll be down like 17 nothing, and then they'll come all the way back to win. By three? Uh, Yeah, 23 to 20. So I, I think that's what's going to happen. I think Virginia Tech is going to have a late run. It's going to be a field goal game. I think actually Virginia Tech wins, 
I'm not really going to touch it, but I do think it's a hair big, hair big. So I'm, I'm right with the Panthers. <laughs> and uh, your question, who was the announcer? His name was Bob Miller. He was also the play by play voice of the Los Angeles Kings. Mm. Uh, I don't know if he still is, but he. he no, I think since, he retired I think since he just 1973. Retired. Just a bit outside. Pa- I think last season he retired. He was in Mighty Ducks and Mighty Ducks 2, currently resides in Woodland Hills, California. Did not get well, the call dope. for Mighty Ducks D3. That's too bad. <laughs> don't know what happened there. Or maybe he did get the call and the number wasn't right. Closing things out, our gals, San Diego State, the Aztecs, the Warriors, face off against another group of Warriors, the Rainbow Warriors in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. Hawaii, a minus three-point favorite. Colby, what are you doing here? Well, first things first. I'm still pledging for Wazoo to be. Yeah, yeah. Th- we, this is it. This is the last yeah. week we're picking San Diego State okay. for a while, guys. Yeah, because they've been fucking us, all, or at least myself, all year. No, they didn't fuck us last week. I, I, I had a nice chunk of change on that. <laughs> You've been- Shout out to Matt Nation, who I, I liked San Diego State in that spot, and I was kind of on the fence, and he was like, dude, yeah, they're definitely covered, and uh, I did it. So Yeah, I was on the wrong side of that one, but... I'm gonna uh, stay on the on on the opposing side of of San Diego State. I think the Rainbow Warriors. That this is a huge uh, conference game here for them. They're still alive to to win the Mountain West West Division, and traveling all the way. And I'm telling you, man, JP Lossman 2.0 is San Diego State's quarterback Agnew. He ain't that good. Yeah, he's not even that JP good. JP Lossman Lossman was a baller. In college, yeah, but I was just saying he <laughs> makes crazy decisions, and it's gonna he's burn horrible. him. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna he's, burn him. He's the he's he's bottom ten quarterbacks. In college. <laughs> There's no way San Diego State keeps up with Hawaii. I think Hawaii wins this game, and uh, yeah, give me the Rainbow Warriors minus three. Lock potential. A lot of soy in in, in Hawaii also. Yeah. So uh, for those of you who live on the East Coast, I'm sorry, but someone might be locking up an 8 p.m. Pacific game. <laughs> Sean, tell me why you're going to take those pussies down from San Diego. Because they just keep covering spreads. Have they invited us on campus, yeah. Sean? No, yeah. they haven't. Yeah, exactly. But I'm going to close things pay out. Pay for with play, the bank. bro. Pay for play. <laughs> San Diego State, the Aztecs. I've actually been, uh, I've been really enjoying uh, Mike Leach's book, Geronimo. A <laughs> lot of, a uh, lot of actually. I mean, Mike Leach, great character, great, great football coach, but really knows his stuff when it comes to Native Americans. Learned a lot of cool, interesting facts about Native Americans and the uh, Geronimo, of course, as you know, Apaches, some of like the craziest warriors, yeah, the bad last, motherfuckers. The, yeah, some real badass dudes, and he he breaks down a lot of a uh, lot of things he really enjoyed about them. One of their cool uh, hunting tricks that they used to do. So uh, ducks would always come and swim on their lakes. So what they would do is they would float out pumpkins and other big gourds. Ryan, you would like this uh, pl- hashtag plant life. And so they would <laughs> they would float them out there on the water. And at first the ducks would get scared and then they would keep floating the pumpkins out on the water. And then the ducks would get used to it and be like, oh, okay, this lake just has pumpkins floating around. And then what these fucking smart ass Apaches would do is carve out the pumpkins, completely carve it out, carve out a little eye hole and carve out a thing and set it on their head no. and then walk into the water with the pumpkin on their Smart. head. So these ducks just think they're a floating pumpkin and then just grab a bunch of ducks in a giant sack, murder them and eat the shit out of them. I expect the same similar performance from our Aztecs wow. plus three, baby. <laughs> uh, uh, they're the, not Apaches the, though. Just to be clear, no. the, the ducks got, they got eight, right? Cause they're like not all the same. It's going to do with them. They're not all the same Sean. But uh, that that's no. why they say Wesley Snipes, part Apache. Bad <laughs> motherfucker. Always bet on black. That's right. <laughs> you don't want to fade black. All right, here we go. Time for our... Happy birthday. Lock Dog Cheese, presented by MyBookie.ag. Promo code SGP. Play, win, and get paid at MyBookie.ag. Colby, how are we playing, winning, and getting paid this week over at MyBookie.ag? I am going to lock up... Let's just let's just do it. Give me the San Jose State Spartans what? in Vegas. Don't do it. The clients didn't do it. They don't deserve this, <laughs> Colby. It's, San Jose it's State gonna minus six and a half. Okay. And then my dog is going to be the, the Toledo Rockets plus two sixty. Toledo plus two sixty. Huh? Max Christ. And my tease that that oh what am I what am I betting? 
I don't know. What are you betting? Something something delicious. All right. Okay. Uh, let's te- <laughs> let's tease down. I don't know. I forget the number. Um, so let's go. Where are we at here? Let's knock down. Say. Let's take. Let's key, take key numbers only, Colby. Yeah, I don't pay attention. Look, I'm I'm hitting at seventy five percent or wherever the fuck the number is. What are you at, buddy? Huh? Not that good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so let's go. Texas up to eleven and a half. Okay. Yeah. Let's take okay. Kansas up to thirty and a half. Mm. Okay. And San Jose State just to win the game. Mm. All right. San Jose State down to a half. And my bonus lock will be the Illini and Lovey Smith, who's already bull eligible. Coming into Iowa City after they beat a top ten team, catching fifteen points. I would look. I was gonna. Uh, they're a good team. They're good at home. But three scores good. I'm not buying that. Give me the Eli and I plus fifteen in wow. Iowa City. Wow, just coming out of left field. Lo- is it my turn or your turn, Sean? You can go next, Ryan. You want me to go next? Yes. Well, for my lock, give me Hawaii. <laughs> San Diego <laughs> State cannot keep up with this score, Sean. I want you to look up. Look up my column in the sheet. The fuck am I going to take it, dog, when I went all favorites? Not one dog. Wow. Go off by the grid. Me. Go off the grid. What do the I fuck? do I have permission? Yeah, Sean? You, uh, you have to at this point. This is a horrible strategy. Horrible strategy. UCLA money line. D- there you go. I'm coming. Let me pull up an I, I, you know, we I am looking over at one site they don't have the money line. So now I got to go to another site. It's a whole hassle, but listen. Clay Helton still the coach for USC, yes? He is. Yes, okay. Uh, UCLA, nothing to play for but this rivalry, yes? Yeah, uh, a bowl. They win, they go to a bowl. Wow. Yeah. So there, you're telling me there's something on the line. Is there anything on the line for USC? Uh, well, Clay Helton pres- preserving his job potentially. But what if they don't <laughs> want that? Yeah, I think he's Plus, done no matter what. 425 on the money line. Give me the Bruins. I like Coming it. off an absolute like whooping. <laughs> Against Utah. <laughs> that was brutal. For my tees. <laughs> Hashtag fire chip. For my tees. Let's uh San Jose State wins that game. Let's tease that down to a half. Well, Ohio, Dar- Ohio State down to uh oh, yeah, twelve yeah. and Let's a half. Let's go to yeah. Ohio State down to twelve and a half. They're gonna murder Penn State. And Wake Forest not losing at home minus one. Mm. I like that. Who's your bonus lock? Oh, well, since I've already gone off book once, (laughs) dare I go off book twice? Uh, So a couple options here, Colby. want your opinion. One, Boston College has turned into a horrible team. Do do you you take the points? Uh, We like them generally against Notre Dame. They historically, yeah. They've become an absolute horrible dog shit team. Or do we... Fade the team that just got broken by Notre Dame and take SMU against Navy. Oh, I'm actually on Navy against SMU. Oh, so, so so you don't agree either way with me. But the other one, I, the other one, I'm kind of like I could see the BC Notre Give Dame. Give me game. Temple yeah. plus ten and a half. Cincinnati fraudulent shouldn't be mm. laying ten and a half points in this. One. I like I like Temple in the point. Temple's always tough, man. Hashtag Temple tough. I I, I think more Cincinnati is is fraudulent. You're not going to take Western Carolina against Alabama. <sighs> or or Samford against Auburn. What is that Western Carolina? I, Samford I, against Auburn. Look at you see the SEC games this they, week. This is this is FCS week for the SEC. Yeah, the bottom of the FCS. Not but even wonder, not even James Madison or North Dakota State. Here's my quick thing about the college football playoff. If you're going to have a ranking system that is time based, where you start ranking teams and then based on their ranking at that point, they only go up and down. They don't get. It's not like a reset rankings yeah. week to week, yeah. right? If you're going to do something like that, you have to put a rule about playing an FCS team this late in the season. And at least, a, if, if so, make it like a, a decent FCS school. These teams are horrible. No, no forget that. Yeah. You just like, let's, you want a bye week? Great. I think there should be rules. From the point the college football playoff rankings come out, you're, no one's allowed to have a bye week. I'm all about that. I'm all about because that. Because all it does is it creates inequity. And now that we're looking at teams, so what? If they don't play, they can move up if other teams lose? lose yeah, Why? Exactly. They're not playing. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Western Carolina is not playing. How did they get better? 
<laughs> right? All right. Bam was a 58 point Sean, favorite, by the way. Yes. You are on the clock. I'm on the clock. Hmm. Interesting options here to take. I think uh, I like the I like the Gophers. I think this is a great bounce back spot uh, for them against a highly fraudulent uh, Northwestern team coming off a gigantic victory. Give me the Gophers minus fourteen road favorites. Wow! For my dog, give me uh, <coughs> Texas A and M to win outright in Georgia. Let's say it's around like four thirty, four fifty, depending on where you can get that right now. For my tees. Interesting teasing options. I'll, I'll take TCU up to 24. Like it. I'll take San Diego State up to nine. Don't like it. And I'll take uh, Pitt up to 10. And for my bonus lock, give me Miami of Ohio squaring off against horrific Akron. <laughs> I love how he's going. This is trend now. Uh, you know, yeah. UMass and Akron. <laughs> well, UMass is on a bye week, right? Yeah. I know. So he was he, he, he was really hurt up by that. Well, I mean, uh, Akron's. <laughs> I like riding uh, history right now. It's it's pretty fun. Oh, I think Akron. Miami's giving away like thirty, right? Or Thirty-one 30, and a half. Yeah, Miami of Ohio right <laughs> now. My book no. AG. Hashtag Max. I like that play. I mean, I'm. I'm I'm going to lock that over on, on on the college experience. I'll tell you that. Check that out over at the college experience. And guys, rate, review, share on iTunes. Come on. Give us that sweet, sweet feedback. We don't ask much from you guys. Just, uh, you know, buy some merch, sign up at my bookie, start your own sports book. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, with aceperhead.com slash SGP, my promo code SGP. Come on, guys. We're building something strong here, taking down these four letter networks and their so-called media empires. This is a community. <laughs> you think ESPN gives a shit about yeah. you or your picks? No, we're no, trying to help not. you get paid. We're trying to help you. I don't know. Take over the world via sports gambling. I feel like we should leave every episode with all of us putting our hands together and like a woe Bundy's on this, on this wazoo <laughs> helmet. You know what I mean? No. All right. All right good talk. T team on three <laughs> solid pitch there. Colby. <laughs> and of course, everyone. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. And for the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Five stars. Hell yes. By Sean T. Green. <laughs> Hashtag DGENs only. Get those reviews in. Kramer, let it ride. <laughs>